Uh, okay, 602, call the meeting to order. Um, we do indeed have a quorum. Uh, we're just missing Megan, but as I just quickly mentioned, she may try to remote in. Um, the meeting purpose, among other things, uh, self-monitoring. We had two policies that we're covering and the uh, reviews from several subcommittee subcommittees and the progress that they're making. Um, but we'll start, as we always do, with public comment. Um, to introduce it, I'll read our preamble here. The board welcomes comments, but is not able to take any action on them other than to direct the public to the appropriate staff member or to the complaint procedure. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. Uh, is there someone here who can be my timekeeper? Thank you, Sarah. Um, time may not be ceded to another speaker. Comments are to be addressed to me, the board chair, or the board as a whole, not to any individual on the board, on the staff, or in the public. Please raise your hand and wait to speak until you are asked to. Please identify yourself with your first and last name and your town of residence. Please refrain from restating comments that have already been shared. You can always express agreement with those comments. Order and decorum shall be observed by everyone. Shouting and profanity are prohibited. As the board chair, I will maintain the order and decorum of the meeting. And with that, we'll hear public comment. Yes. Uh, Bethany Soloy, Randolph Center. Um, I'm here today just because I wanted to ask that uh, the topic of the mascot change at the Randolph Elementary School be put on your agenda for the next meeting for you all to be able to discuss. Um, I have a lot of concerns around that and I feel like it's been kept very quiet and um, just kind of casually mentioned in some newsletters, I have worked with the principal to learn a little bit more about why and um, all the reasons why that's happening, but um, just wanted to share that I feel like changing it is a real waste of our uh, resources, time, money, uh, things that just don't need to be done at this time when we have way bigger things that we need to be concerned about on the school level and for our kids. Um, and I think that the public needs to be made a lot more aware of the fact that this is being discussed um, so that more people can weigh in on how they feel about that. So. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone online? No one's online. Anyone else in the room want to speak? Yeah. Here you go. Ditch Road over there. Um, Just say your name for Howard us. Carroll. Thank you. They did the road over there. They weren't supposed to raise it up. They raised it up. And they weren't supposed to touch the saw. They cut into the saw. One stop sign over there doesn't need to be there because they can put it one way on, on both sides. It's usually, when you read a sign, it's on the right hand side, not right and left. Follow me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyways, it's unneeded. And I don't know why you put breakaways in. It gets bottom of the stop signs at six feet like it's supposed to be. So then, um, Guy took his dump truck and deliberately hit my apple tree over there, broke branches. He said, I asked him, he said, I know what I'm doing. So maybe he was told to do that. I don't know. But um, I asked him to bring his saw, you know, saw, and we'll, I'll tell him where he cut him, trim him back. And the owner just laughed it off. Um, so, yeah, I'm perturbed, very upset. Um, like I said, the road wasn't supposed to be raised either, the elevation. That's been raised. So he did whatever he wanted to do and not did not follow the directions. And then I was supposed to get a construction meeting. And well, the guy called me, so he only had about 30 seconds of time that he could spend with me. So this all could have been avoided if we had a sit down construction meeting like I requested. So yeah. Does this snow need to go further? Yes. Can you correct it? I hope so. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not happy at all. So, and if, also if they continue to go fast down there, I mean, they went, they did good one day when the cars were released first before the buses, when Mr. Millington was there. It was 
that went flawlessly that day. The traffic stayed slowed down and everything. But if you go fast, I'm going to suggest that we put in a, not a speed bump, but a six inch trench bump, 14 inches wide, full length of it. Because my neighbor's got kids and I'd like to see them slow down there. And that will, that will work better than a speed bump. So, I don't know where to go from there. Do you get answers today or not? Okay. Um, we, I do not. Um, we don't, we, during public comment, um, yeah. other than, than directing to the complaint procedure. Um, so, I don't have a response right now. The board doesn't have a response right now. Um, but your comment has been noted. Because um, I took pictures of the whole thing. Okay. Um, I got papers stating that they weren't going to raise the elevation. They didn't get permission to put a swale into my grass. Um, the swale should have been in the driveway, not my lawn, not my neighbor's lawn. So, like I said, I'm not, I'm not pleased. Okay. Um, do we need to set up for a different time to speak? Um, that could very well be. I think uh, the best course of action is for you to contact uh, the superintendent and share anything there with Mr. Millington that you'd like to share, and then we'll and then we'll take it from so there. So go through him to get the set up for the next meeting. Correct. To where we get from here. Correct. Okay. Please contact me if you get any of this stuff fixed. Feel free to knock on my door. Okay. Um, just uh, I just assume Mr. Millington he wants to knock on my door, but the other two understudy below him, I'm not interested in talking to. And I also want to clear up that statements were made that I was the one to stop contacting people. No, that wasn't the issue. I've got text messages I can show you sometimes where I texted back and forth, texted and no response, no response, no response. So that, I'm just telling you that because I want to clear my name. That's not what happened. Okay. Um, um, so that is time. Yep, so that's fine. the end of your comment. Thank you very much, yep. Mr. Carroll. Thank you. Anyone else? There. Okay. All right. Then we will move on. Thank you for your comments. Um, it is now time for us to consider a student request. Um, I know that Jamie Sauls is here to speak with us, so uh, I'd like to hand it over to you, if I may. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. In executive session? Or do we hear it and then go into it? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, because it's a per, because it's a student Same. issue and you Same. don't know what might be presented, you're probably better off in executive session. Okay. Um, because I'm assuming that folks will be talking about things that are personal under FERPA. Okay. Um, all right, understood. Yeah, so just more of it as a safety piece, yeah. Okay, yeah. great. If there's a vote that happens, that would happen outside, outside of executive of session. Yeah. Okay, um, so because this is a student issue um, to protect uh, the privacy and confidentiality of a student issue, um, we are, I'll entertain a motion to. I'll thank move you. to enter executive session. Just just second. Moved by Katya and seconded by Sarah. So that does mean that we have to ask you to step out. I do hope that you'll return <laughs> um, and we'll let you know when we're coming out of executive session. So stay close if you plan on uh, returning. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for coming back. We're back in a 6.30 public session. And I will entertain any motions for a vote. I make a motion to approve the request for guest student status for this year. Uh, any further discussion for open session? Do we want to amend until the school choice, school choice is, available. Is, available. is available again for this year that and then for next year? Yeah. yeah, for the following year that they follow the. So, guest student choice status process. through this school year? Yes. yes. Yeah. They follow the school choice process. Yes. For the following year. I will second that motion. Seconded by Sam. All those in favor, please raise your hand or say aye or both. Aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstentions. 
it passes unanimously. Thank you both for coming in and speaking with us. Have a good school year. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to monitoring. Oh, look, Heather, we're ahead of time. Um, <laughs> second reading of uh, EL 2.0, 2.8, and 2.9. Those were included in our packets. Um, let's start with 2.0. Uh, any discussion, concerns, Yeah, comments? I didn't notice it until this afternoon, and I'm really sorry. Um, no apologies. But we had changed our policy back in April to read after imprudent. We had added inequitable mm -hmm. to sort of have an overall equity Emphasis. I remember this, but bring me to the line. Right. Bring me to. It's on the main part, so okay. it's the main part of the. So the superintendent shall not cause or allow any practice, activity, decision, or organizational circumstance that is unlawful, unsafe, imprudent, inequitable, or in violation of commonly accepted educational and professional mm -hmm. ethics. And Thank practices, you, and for some reason, it didn't get updated in the uh, in our policies. It's, so it's, it's in the with, policy. It's probably I got it. And we'll make sure it gets up on the new website. Yeah, because I remember making the change in the little in the, uh, yeah. Probably, yeah yeah yeah. So I good, just good had yeah. I I <laughs> I just happened to pull open the one where I had hand put it in mine, and then I was like, oh no! So then I. So Went back and make sure that gets so. up on the new website too. Yeah, so that's the only thing that I saw. No, thank you for that catching was. that. Gotcha. Anyone else on two point And we can still, if I correct me if I'm wrong, vote to accept with that um, mm -hmm. yep. edit. Okay, but we're, we're, I'd like to do these all at once if possible. So um, moving on to 2.8, communication and support to the board. Comments, concerns, questions. It's a long one. No? Seeing none, all right, 2.9. Policies required by legislative or regulatory bodies. Wait a minute. <clears throat> yeah, we're missing a Y. Regulatory. Mm -hmm. There we go. I wonder if it was the printer. The printer. Yeah, yeah. It could very well be a margin. Then. Comments? Well, yeah. the only thing that I was looking at in this one is um, under the evidence of the handbook, student, faculty, athletic, parent, administrator, as a particular uh, must uh, changes to handbooks are typically communicated in person to the groups affected at the start of the school year, assemblies, meetings, and forums. And what did I mean by that? <laughs> Trainings, parents, and students. So the students, I guess we all accept that we that these trainings take place They're usually like in with, advisory. With the students, it's their opening day assemblies. Yeah. Um, or, you know, the, the first time they're communicating with parents. And, and then the coaches' nights, yeah. the coaches go over the yeah, handbook so. or the co curricular. Guide. Yeah. Okay. And that's yeah. uh, that's uh, part of the expectations push this year. The expectations and the standards of yeah. recognizing excellence is kind of reconfirming and getting people back on board with making sure that that's happening consistently. Right. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the 2025 onward annual review and updates each October, and um, perhaps just a kind of not a presentation, but a, an yeah. update or a giving us a chance to review, not to approve, but yeah. to 
be informed yeah. mm -hmm. in October. And those are also, those are your, the, all the different advisory boards at each of the schools are doing a, a review of those as yeah. well, right? Yeah, that was a big They're part doing, of the strategic planning yeah. and stuff that we've been engaged in this last year. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Good questions. Okay. Anyone else? All right, then I will um, entertain a motion regarding all three at once, if there is one. I move to accept the monitoring report for Global Constraints 2.0, uh, Communication Support to the Board 2.8, and policy is required by legislative or regulatory bodies 2.9. And with the edit in that first. And with to the add edit in 2.0 to add inequitable in there. In the pre Great. Is it called the preamble? I think that's what it's called. Do I have a second? A second. Seconded by Chelsea. Uh, further discussion? Great. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstentions? Great. Passes unanimously. Okay. Quarterly facilities monitoring report. Um, a couple of specific things to uh, to go over, but Lane, do you want to start kind of generally or jump right into? Yeah, I, I think it probably would flow into the you know the the next conversation as well. Mm -hmm. So the the facilities monitoring report um, was put in place as a control. It was one of the controls that was put in place probably either my first or second year. I don't don't remember when. Um, and one of the reasons for it was because when I was looking back to see how like reserve um, requests were made um, prior to our time here, um, there were reserve requests that were made, but when we went looking to see if the work had been done or if the equipment had been purchased, it was nowhere to be found. And so in recognizing that, um, it was important to put a control in place. And so what this facilities report does is a few things. Um, it is the, the long-term plan. It looks out potentially three to five years, you know, the major projects that we've got to do, anything that's over $10,000 is on here. Um, but the other piece that it does is it's got the place for the direct inspection. So when you see the LWM next to one, it means that the work's completed and, you know, if it's LWM, it's me. If it's, if it's uh, you know, RP, that's Robin. Um, Heather will add to the list. It means somebody has actually gone out and physically looked and confirmed that, yes, the work was done or the equipment that was purchased is here. And so that was one of the controls um, that was built in through this process. Um, I'm not sure if there's specific questions on this or not. I mean, I can also leave it up to Bob and Wes who are here to talk about it because there was significant work that was done. Uh, across the district in the last year, and especially this summer, um, as you know, but um, just so you know a little bit about the report. Yeah, I wonder if from the board there are questions about um, the process in general to either request facilities funds or, because again, I know there are a couple of very specific projects we want to talk about, but are there more general questions from anyone? Um, I have some questions. Um, I guess I would like to know like how the reserve fund works in general. So, so we, let's go back to like the end of a, a fiscal year. Right? Mm -hmm. So in on uh, June thirtieth, any money that is is left over on June thirtieth in the budget um, is surplus. What happens is during the budget process as we go through it um, is one of two things. Um, either at my level, we just decide we're going to roll that into subsidizing taxes for next year so we can roll it over and apply it directly to the next year's budget. 
or in the case of the board, I come to the board and say, okay, um, you know, given the, the projections for the future and making sure that we've got enough on hand to replace a roof when it comes to, you know, we want to add 200,000 to the facilities uh, reserve. The board actually reviews that, approves it, and then it goes to the second step after you approve it, it actually goes on the March vote because the, the voters in the town have to approve the use of that money as well. And so once it goes through the March vote, that money then sits in the reserve fund and can be used for those, those uses um, that we set it for. And so we've got a number of different reserve funds. We've got a legal fund, we've got the facilities fund, we've got a transportation fund for the buses, we've got an operational fund that, that we built in, which was primarily for our software work that needed to happen. So that's the process and how it gets there. Yeah. That was just like two or three years ago, wasn't it? Which one? The we operations? Year. The operational that one was two years ago. Was made, yeah. It was, um, we were dealing with the fact that the uh, state was five years behind in providing um, the districts with the financial software package that they had promised us. Um, and so it got to the point where the auditors are saying, you know, your, your software package is so out of date, it's not doing the things you need to be doing for proper controls. But here we are, we're waiting for the state to approve the package because, um, if we went and paid for our own and the state then turned around and said, no, we're, we're, we are going to follow through on making sure that everybody uses the software that the state chose, you know, we'd be at $85,000, you know, starting on a new software and then have to switch over to the state. The state last year finally made some legislative changes on that. And so we just, we upgraded uh, title of our financial software system to make sure that we did everything that we needed to do. But it was a five year waiting game with the state. Yeah. So good questions. Um, another question I have is, are, is any of the reserve fund um, granted money or is it all tax? It all comes from, from taxes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I have no control over it. So after it goes into the reserve fund, the only way I can access it is through approval from the board. Mm -hmm. all right. But the reason there's so much is because of grants. Because we're able to fund things with grants. And then we have so, surplus. Yeah, th that's a little. And then not spend tax dollars. That's a little bit of it, yes. Um, there are also things that we get reimbursed for, um, which means that we have to plan for it up front. So it's got to be in the budget to be able to pay. It's usually for special education services, so we pay it up front. And then after we pay it, the state reimburses us. And so that money goes in there. The other thing that happens, and so this is important, probably be easier if I could put it on a board, but see if I can describe this in my, my tired state tonight. Um, with the surplus funding is when we come to the board and so I say we need a hundred thousand to repair whatever it is um, lots of times we actually don't pull that money out of the reserve fund we we get your approval we wait until the end of the year and then if there's enough in surplus we just take it out of surplus and then we never access it um, and so in some cases, what will happen if it's a large bill, you know, 300000 for repairing the heat, that we take out uh, because we don't know in the middle of the year if surplus might cover that or not. We literally take it out, we pay it, and then all of a sudden we had enough to cover it under surplus and now we've got the extra money that we pulled out of. And so that's a part of the reason um, lately that the, the surpluses have been so high. So there's, there's a variety of factors that kind of go into that if it makes sense. Do you have any type of like performance chart that you could show us or this other stakeholders of how the reserve funds are being spent and depleting and gaining? You have financial documents. I can show you where on the financial documents they are. You get a monthly update. Okay. Um, if folks are interested and that's public, it comes out with every board meeting. Um, this is an area where if the board feels that it wants something, you just have to, as a board, um, tell me what it is that you want for information. I'm happy to provide it. Um, but that's not something we usually do. Usually with the uh, facilities reserve funds, um, we're dealing typically with like matters of, of safety or, or things that we've been planning on for a while. The reserve funds um, primarily started out, um, especially the facilities reserve fund, kind of like a savings bank account. We were putting money into it because we know that there are certain big ticket items that happen on a regular schedule, like roofs have to be replaced every 10 years, uh, or excuse me, every 20 years, um, things like that. 
And so by having the money in the reserve funds and available for that, it means we don't have to go out to bond. So I don't have to go out, take a loan, um, ask the, the community to vote um, to approve the loan, you know, add to people's tax base and whatnot to pay that off over time. Yeah. Uh, we have the money right then and there, and we earn a little bit of interest on it, yeah. So that's kind of the, the logic there, so if that makes sense. Not sure if I answered the question, but yeah. yeah but if, they, if there are, are things that folks want to know, like I said, none of that reserve money is is touched unless the board approves it. Um, so you are in the loop on everything that we spent it on. The community is because they're in the minutes and everything else that that come to you. One of the controls that I put in place um, again that that first year here. Um, actually, I don't even think I asked for any reserve funds until probably my second year here. I went back and looked at how they did it in the past. They used to just give you a sheet and said, you know, we need 300000 for this. One of the things that I make sure happens for the board and one of the controls is you get the, the quote directly from the vendor attached to that form so that you know what, what we're asking for. There's a basis for it. Yeah. And so, but those are controls that I put into place since I've been here. So can I just, just because the board was had some concerns. So for example, on the cleaning of the gym, mm -hmm. three bids came in. They were all over forty thousand. So you had so you had three bids. Um, you chose one, you requested the funds, but the work hadn't quite been done yet. And when I looked at the at the uh, spreadsheet it shows, okay, here was the bid for what they thought the price might be for the cleaning. And then finally the bill comes in, in the end from the vendor saying, here's the, here's the actual cost and that's what's listed in there. So the board approved that higher amount of reserve fund. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing that basically the process is that way because you know you're going to have a bill coming. I got to make sure it's covered and, before right, I engage right, with the vendor. Right. There. So then, so then, if you don't need as much as you thought you would from the bid that they put in, you just only use that little bit. And in, in and most, I would imagine it's tracked in some way. Yeah, it's, it's, there's three of us through there. the financial process. There's always dual control. Robin double checks everything. She makes sure that the three bids come in. She makes sure the amounts. And like I said, our typical process is we ask the money to make darn sure we have it available to pay the vendor because mm -hmm. it would be unethical to right. and get you them to come and in you and gotta, do the, do you the work. you got to put that but in front of the We often don't even tap the time. reserve fund um, if we think that we're going to have the surplus at the end of the year. We wait and see what the surplus is paid out of surplus. And then if we don't even need to get the money that we requested from the surplus. But wouldn't the vendor don't. need the, I mean, they probably need to be paid. Mm -hmm. That's part of the reason why you, you, I mean, we have a monthly meeting. And if you've got a vendor who's been engaged and you've accepted their bid and you've engaged them in this work, you you probably know that you're going to get a bill at some point. I mean, you could, I guess, wait and call a special meeting of the of the board to approve that reserve funding at that point. Yeah. But the point is, we go ahead and we approve the reserve funding based on the estimate. Based on the estimate. We wait for the billing to come in. There are several eyes on it. You then check to make sure the work is done. And then we pay the bill as it comes in. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah. Okay. And part of the, the process here, and, and Bob and Wester here, um, they, they're a little bit more intimate with the vendors than I am. I'm, I'm more kind of on the looking at what's coming in because we all kind of did the same thing when we saw the labor, but the labor was high. Um, relative to what the final cost was, the labor was high on all three bids. So when we see that, that's a control, right? We know that they're in the ballpark of each other, so it, it, it should be legit, uh, a legitimate quote that they're giving us. Um, in this case, you know, Bob and Wes can talk a little bit about, you know, what the vendor might have been expecting versus, you know, what they actually encountered and, and whatnot. Um, but all three were expecting to encounter the same thing, which is why they were all high on the labor. The other piece on the form here is, um, 
you know, when we've got the, the dollar amounts available that, that come in is you've got, you know, what the quotes were coming in at, and then you've got what the actual, you know, when it's completed, what the actual right. amount was spent. So this is also a public facing document. Um, and what happens with them is after I've done the direct inspection, when you see the LWM there or whoever has done the direct inspection, those items come off this um, the, the, the month afterwards because it means it's complete, it's done, it's been reported out to the community. Yeah. Do you have a timeline for, the, for when you do your inspection? You kind of have like a... I wait until I see that it's done on the, the report. We meet every Tuesday too, okay. um, but, but usually it's... It's uh, when, the, when they're, they're getting the, the report updated for the, the quarterly piece as I go out and I usually take a look. Uh, yeah. Um, just a quick question. I see that the vape sensors are on here, and I know that those were, or I think those are being paid for via grant funds, or not grant funds, um, settlement funds from the Jewel Settlement. Is that correct? Those were, if I remember, we did reserve funds for it. We have not, I don't believe we've received a check yet from the settlement. So I had joined in with a, a group of state schools um, to go after Jewel to pay back some of the damages that we've suffered because of their product getting into the hands of our, our, our students. Um, but we have not received a check yet that I, I'm, I'm aware of. Um, I will check. Yeah. A lot of that, if folks remember I, what I said we were going to try to do with that funding when it came in was use it for cessation. Mm -hmm. um, because the students that are vaping and get, getting caught, um, you know, it, that's a hard thing to break. It's even harder than cigarettes. I mean, you know better than I do. Um, and part of the rewriting of the um, RUHS, some of the handbook wording from last year was just mm -hmm. that if you get caught a second time um, vaping in school, you are required to go through cessation if you want to participate in our extracurricular activities of any type and sort. And so that's what mm -hmm. that money was kind of geared for. for yeah. So good, good memory. I don't think that generally the source of funding is reported on the sheet at this time. You can see in the top line it indicates the kitchen line upgrade was a grant, mm -hmm. but then when you go yeah, down to where it's the heat pumps, point. that and there's a typo in the heat pumps at Braintree. They were not two million. <laughs> that, that's yeah, two, that's that two hundred and thirty-six thousand. And that was that also was grant funded. So we don't currently have a system of saying like where the funds are coming. We can put another column in. That's actually that would point. be great. Thank you. Yeah, you really want to notice that. Yeah, one. you really are. <laughs> Two million dollars. No problem. Well, she she she, 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 she and they worked on worked on the HVAC. Wes and I wrote that grant. <laughs> you get you got the one that I sent out on the the three so the yeah, three yeah. that was supposed to be a one. But. I, I emailed yeah. that two days ago. I can't ago, look so. at these things without a computer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's well, hard. some of it with us is it's the older eyes looking at the... Yeah. That's all my type of those. I can't see the stuff. Right. So, so as Lane pointed out, Bob and Wes are both here. Thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it. Um, so if there are questions from the board that you would want to direct to these gentlemen, that now is the time. Or if you guys wanted to report anything to us without being prompted by a question. Uh, you're more than welcome to. Um, well, I every time that we request something, it is almost always um, accepted. I hope that's because we have our ducks in a row when we uh, present it to Mr. Millington, who then presents it to you. Um, who is Miss Sarah? Okay. That's All me. Right. Um, we we're, we had an open door. You guys have our emails. Um, many of you see me in the in, in the public. You see Wes in the public. We we're not hiding anything, and we we actually encourage you guys to be participatory in the engineering projects that we have here, because you have a school that, that that's really needs a lot of work. And every time that we break into something, we find a dead body that we have to deal with. All right. Um, I'll give you two real quick case in point. The below grade catastrophic failure of the heating conveyance that happened November 10th. Mm -hmm. um, and then this uh, fiasco that we found when we did a demo in the high school gymnasium from floor repair. Um, those are indicative of the conditions the school is. And it's not this current board, it's not anybody's single fault. It is it is the culture that schools are notorious they don't do preventive and predictive maintenance. And you don't have, you know, this school does, um, a, a solid engineering staff or facility staff that is looking at that 
Um, and you have not had, in my opinion, based on, I'm an old guy and I've been around the block a long time. And uh, based on my observation of what has gone in this district, um, is you have not had a proactive superintendent and a proactive board until six, seven years ago. And the board and Millington, and, and Mr. Millington is my boss, so I'm not going. I can step out of the room. Okay. I can step out of the room. Well, yeah, let's go to an executive session and get him out. Yeah. Um, but, uh, um, but we, you know, we find it. I personally find it in a, in a 30 plus year career in engineering. Um, it's very, very I'm happy to see that he's engaged. He got, like he said, he's, he, he's in our office every Tuesday morning at zero nine. And now Ms. Heather is also, and they ask some point blank, some difficult questions. And, and not, you know, we, we like that. All right. You asked me a couple not difficult questions, but you wanted to know, I mean, things happen and, and we, we look at them and as far as the cleaning, um, we didn't go after three. We, we actually went after six people, six different contractors to do that cleaning. And we, th there are certain times that I see Mr. Millington um, apoplectic, okay? <laughs> and that was one of them, all right? Cause, and we were all sticker shock when we saw that first bid. We got no bids from GW Savage, Service Master, and Cleanway Services. These are, and then Service Pro. Or serve pro, those are all the major players in this neck of the woods for this type of work. Three of the four, no bidders. Uh, serve pro did, it came in at 180, no, 163, 163 or 168, something like that. And, and we were flabbergasted. And so we went out and invited other uh, contractors to, to provide us bids. And fortunately, Harmony, who we have a long history with, um, they said, We'd like to, because all, all it mostly was, um, or is, is labor. And buying equipment to get them up in the air, getting the, the specialized equipment to capture those the particulate matter that we generated when we did all the granting and, and, and demoing of the floor. And so, um, Harmony came in, they, they kind of did the first few days the way that Serve Pro were going to do, do it. Um, and they, they changed their methodology. And they came in a fourth of what the cost was. And so that, that was a happy, happy, happy day. Um, but it still added three to four weeks of the project. So you know, we're, looking, we're looking one November before we're in that gym. Sorry, sir. He's, he's, he's making it up because he's, he doesn't want to get people's hopes up that we'll be saying it. So, so Bob, sir, I can, I can pick on you since you're here. Because... Somebody in the community was saying that, you know, we weren't doing the water chemistry. Who noticed that the water chemistry wasn't being done when they started doing, in the heating system, when they started their jobs here? Well, sir, you know the answer to that. I, 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 I want the community to okay, know. I did. I did. You, the, in a closed loop heating system, your water chemistry is of paramount importance, of absolute importance. And if you do not stay on top of that, you are just, you're deteriorating your system from the inside. And, and we caught it when we took, when we took the job and we each have our, 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 we're not experts at anything, but we have the areas that we like to deal with. And that's one that I particularly, I like the chemistry side of it. And, and we did the water chemistry, it was all off. And we brought, we, we went out for bid. Um, I have my own opinions on what contractors are, are the best because of my experience in training. And, um, and we brought State Kennan and they got us compliant, but we knew, we knew we had a problem. And I was really hoping it was gonna hit after I retired, but it did not. It did. <laughs> and, and even before, there, the, the, probably that same guy in the community I was flapping his jaw about, uh, we should have saw this coming. And in the note of thanks that we put in the newspapers in the area, did y'all see those? Okay. I, I, I clearly articulated that we saw it coming. Um, I, I put a Reader's Digest version in there, but, uh, but we, we let the community know that we saw it coming. We were hoping it was above grade, but it was very, very apparent once we fixed all the small leaks that we were below grade and we were hoping this to still limp into the spring and summer. Didn't happen, didn't happen. But, and, and I also, I'm, I'm on my soapbox now, <laughs> this water issue out front here, all right? I'm hearing in the community that it's all repaired now. 
It is not repaired, ladies and gentlemen. It is not repaired. We put a Band-Aid on it so we can get school started. We, you know, we've got a problem and we have to address it. And Mr. Millington and his facilities team, we, we've got a plan to do that and we're hoping that it does not have to happen until next summer when most of the children are outside of the educational sphere. So we're keeping, keeping our fingers crossed that it's gonna hold, we think it will. Um, you know, we've talked about, you know, what about vacations and whatnot. So it's the main line that comes from the, the city water out on the street that feeds the, the complex here. Um, the part that failed, and Bob can be more descriptive of it, the part that failed was a connector. The pipe sizes were different sizes, what was coming in from the city versus connecting to the school. And so there was a piece that connected the two is what, what kind of thing. Yeah, what, what with, they but were the, dissimilar metals. Yeah. Um, and you and get the electrolysis. The splice, and, and I don't want to, I don't want to, when I said the word Band-Aid, it is a good fix. All right. It is a good fix. And it should be fine. But we do not want to say that it is corrected because we need to, we need to parallel horizontally drill because uh, we don't want to tear the school apart. Because um, we'll have another fiasco like we did in November through January. Um, we won't have be able to have occupancy in that part of the of the facility, but um, so we, we, we have a permanent fix, um, but we just want to wait. But I I just want to caution you that don't go out there and say that it's fixed because it is not. We still have a problem that needs to be resolved, and that dissimilar material. We need the material, the ductile um, iron that goes from the town to about six or eight feet from the wall. Yeah, really okay, neat. and then it goes right into black pipe, cast iron pipe. And and that's where that's where we're like, uh, th that's where the, the problem will occur if it does occur. Yeah, and it's it's like he said, it's a good fix, but it's <laughs> this is another you know going to be a reserve fund request. And given the fact that the majority of that main feeder pipe runs under the foundation of this building, you know we would have to you know rip the foundation up except for the idea that they have, which is to bore a hole, put a parallel pipe in there and, and, and get things reconnected. There are some good good things that we've noticed is, is the outside service entrance is below footers. Yeah. So it, you know, if we get real lucky, we'll only have, and like Wes said, he, he was looking at the prints. And um, if we get real lucky, we'll only have to go through one wall. Yeah. If, uh, if we get lucky, it'll only be two, but it's not gonna be three and four. So we, to put the put the pieces together, which I think is is really important, is you know the the plumber was out here, <coughs> and and these two actually added a good piece to the metaphor. To see if I can remember it. It's like you know you got a seventy year old building. You know if it were a seventy year old car, you wouldn't expect it to come in and fire up happily every day. And then the the comment that came up. Do you remember? Yeah. If you didn't change a seventy year old car when you first bought it, you did not maintain it for the first fifteen years. And that's exactly what we have done. And, and it wasn't 15 years, the first 30 years. We didn't maintain it. Well, we started maintaining our building. We did uh, pre yeah, prior to seven, eight years ago. And, um, but although we did a good job, thank you, Ms. Kaplan, for saying this to me during the week when I saw VTC, is, is the contractors did a pretty good job making a silk purse out of that sow's ear of an SU um, office building. Have you all been in there? Okay, it looks pretty nice. Um, even still, this building, is, I mean, our, it, it, it's got, it, it may have pretty decent curb appeal, but you got some broken parts in here. And major ones. And that's why that's why you guys have assigned us to look at this uh, potential for a new school. So we're doing that. And you have two of the best facilities managers in the state. Well, yeah. I don't know about that, but um, <laughs> the, the, the superintendents, right? You guys have a group that you meet together. You're, you're two of the best. Well, yeah. um, all I all I want is, is all I want to convey is I is our appreciation in Western China and to you is, is I don't think that we have come to you and asked for anything that you did not provide for us. You have sometimes pushed back and asked for more information. And again, I applaud, I applaud that. I, I like that actually because that means you're you're thinking, you're looking at. And uh, you know, and I don't want to be taken at it's just my word, unless unless I really need you to believe me. Um, so, but anyway, that's all. I'm sorry I spoke so much, talked too much. Wes told me that he would shut me up if I got. <laughs> I thought I saw an elbow. <laughs> um, I do have one question quickly. Um, 
with that cleaning, because obviously it came in almost $100,000 less than the estimate. Um, so that, I guess it turned out, was just like a general construction cleaning, not an abatement post. Like okay. there was no... Right. There's also another... I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> um, a lot of people talk about the biologics that we found. Mm -hmm. Okay, when we, we did nine bore holes to try to give us, understand what I mean, we did some destructive boring. Um, before we decided, before we even, we, we knew we had a problem before, but before we presented to the superintendent, um, what we, what our vision was, jump in if I'm, no, I okay, okay, before we presented it, we wanted to know what we were dealing with. And we had, we had the cream of the crop flooring company come in here and do these destructive borings. And, I, and we did nine holes. And we, we just said, put one there, put one there, put just randomly. Mm -hmm. And every one of those borings missed, missed what we found when we started to do the big demo. Every one of them hit wood into wood and then into concrete. It didn't hit wood into wood the the inch and a half it went down deep so it went full, the full four inches was what we anticipated so we thought we were dealing with just a normal floor we did not realize what the clowns did 30 some years ago when they put that new floor in there had i been an engineer in charge or a clerk of the walk in, or in charge of that project maybe i would have done the same thing maybe i doubt it but maybe i would have based on whatever type of pressures were, were, were coming on but i will i would guarantee that there'd be drawings um, available and notes that said we were squawking about what we were asked to do. What we found, and I have I have some some diagrams for you if you want to be more learned on what we found in there. Um, but what we found is not what we're putting in there now. We have what, what pre-existed, and that's all been demoed, and we're putting a state-of-the-art floor. And it's going to break my heart if we demo this whole place and build another. I mean, I'll enjoy that project, but we are putting and. An ordinate amount of money in that in the high school gym, and it's going to look nice. It's going to look really nice. Um, so, so, so bad. I was just say so to answer more of your question, the abatement itself was primarily done by the floor company that's doing it. They jack. I mean, they actually had two skid steers inside with jackhammers, hammering away concrete, tearing up all this old benign material. But we didn't they, find any biological nasties that had to be, that had to be taken out. Really, yeah, when yeah, when we did the boreholes, yeah, we found, we knew that we had probably anaerobic bacteria just because there's not mm -hmm. a lot of oxygen there. Um, and and it, it was a smelly mess. It was black, greenish black, and it smelled. So we capped those boards and said, okay. But as soon as we opened that up, it dried all that out. So it became benign. Yeah. So no. then the cleanup became mostly dust, airborne dust, mm -hmm. and as far as the labor, which saved the hundred thousand dollars, Harmony, who got the job, came in and they started out whole hog, and then we're like, well, you know, we're wasting our time. We don't really need to do that step. We can vacuum it as opposed to wetting it down and capturing it that way, drying it out. and re So through their process of learning, mm -hmm. they chose other options, which got the job done a lot quicker. Um, so that's where the cost savings essentially mm -hmm. was. Um, it wasn't like they were trying to capture asbestos mm -hmm. floating in the air or anything like that. They, we knew it was just basically concrete dust. But as part of essentially, the, there was no asbestos found in the floor. No. no, was it there a test done with the that black wet stuff that was dug up with the skid steer? Um, was, was there any test done? No, we didn't. And, and that actually wasn't dug up by the skid steer when we initially had bored the what half inch holes. Yeah, three quarters. Um, we noticed that there was moisture, mm -hmm. and then everything was sealed right back in at that point. And what Bob's indicating is that once we pulled the floor, the maple floor up, the floor dried out immediately. I mean, before we could even really do anything. So, I mean, it, it was just the capture between layers of the moisture that was underground. Yeah, 30 years of to go. <laughs> And the folks at Casella Waste Management, they came in and retrieved all that. They knew what we were putting in there. And so... 
it goes and Casella wouldn't be in some business if they weren't doing it correctly. Mm -hmm. So, but my guess is, and you guys can answer this, is that probably the reason, because that was part of the discussion that we had about you know potential abatement and whatnot, the reason the quote was so high was because they didn't know that just in case, yeah, yeah, yeah. they didn't yeah. know. Yeah. They had no idea how So the many. assumption was it was high because they, the, there was going to be an abatement, there was going to be a, a physical chemical wipe down of everything and whatnot, which did, ended up not having to happen. When the, fire the, the, the folks from Army who did, were eventually awarded the job, they still had to have, you know, filtration on their map because concrete dust, you don't want to be breathing that either. I mean, we all know what silicosis is, so. Um, and, and Harvey did, they, I mean, they, they did it correctly. And we and, and as you saw, we sealed that area off and we fanned, pushed everything out to the outside um, and captured it. And part of the, uh, and I will just correct, every surface was wiped down and or vacuumed. Um, and to take it into the point is for probably 30 or 40 years, those rafters, those joists have not been cleaned. I mean, we went from the ceiling down and they, every surface, the weight room that's up there, every weight has been moved multiple times. Um, once you get to see in there, you approve lighting. We have new LED lighting in there. It's it's quite a, quite a spectacle. <laughs> that's, you're gonna be happy. To yeah, see. I think you're gonna be happy. You're gonna have the brand new floor, brand new artwork, like Wes said, with the LED lights. Thanks again. Um, it's just it's gonna be it's gonna it's gonna be a showcase. It's it's a weight room still on the stage. Pardon it me? is the weight room is weight still room on is still stage. on the stage yeah. currently. Yes. Maybe you can just build a new building around the existing gym. Yeah, well, yeah, actually, <laughs> that's actually <laughs> about about morning. That's okay. one proposal. That's right. That's right. That we're that coming actually up. Came up. <laughs> Um, what is your name, ma'am? <laughs> Mine? I just have one more question. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just have one more question. Um, you had mentioned before and then again in our previous conversation about purchasing of tools for these projects. So when we're purchasing what? Tools. tools. So when we're purchasing tools for these projects to be done, um, do your facility team, like, do they get to keep them or are they? We try to have the contractors either buy them or rent them. And most of the time okay. they rent them. All, okay. the, all the equipment that, that the contractor used was all rented. Now, I, I think they have one lift of their own, they have, right? They have one lift. Okay. Yeah. So, so, but most of the time that's, that's rented equipment. Mm -hmm. We don't. Quite frankly, our, our staff, our maintenance staff, or, or they don't have the skill set to be doing a lot of that. Okay. Okay. I saw on. And I don't um, have the space to store mm -hmm. stuff like that. Okay. As I saw, like on your invoice, the finalized one, there was um, an air compressor for like fifteen hundred dollars. Is that something? That was deep? rental. That was a rental of. Harmony's bringing in their large air compressors okay. to use through the process. Mm -hmm. um, just like they rented one of the, lit, basically they rented it to us. We paid for the use of that is what. So they bring it on site, they use it, and they, you know, they have formula that they use. And he told me when his equipment, when his Bobcat's out, mm -hmm. it's so much per hour to, use it and um, you know those types of things so that the compressor for fifteen hundred dollars that was Tim's cost mm -hmm. to us to use that equipment even though he was using it for the project but that was what he figured you know just like ours we're going to charge you so much of okay. for this an analogy of that is if you hire like when we hired Gilman to do the front water main break. We brought an excavator in here and we paid $200 an hour for that. Well, when you add that up, it was $2,500 or $2,400 or whatever. Right. So we didn't buy that excavator. It'd be a couple more zero, at least one more zero on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Great. Um, Thanks and, for answering the questions. Yeah, not yeah. a problem. Does it help? I mean, anything Absolutely. else? Absolutely. Yeah. Anne, did you mm -hmm. have a question? Well, no, I just, I just, for the board's education, I think it's important to understand 
that they have procedures that they're following, they have protocols, they have relationships with, with different vendors, and, you know, and we have policies that also require when it's going to be over 40,000, they're going to, they're going to get several bids, mm -hmm. because I think that's the level that the board needs to con be concerned about. I mean, boring how many holes and the exact <laughs> air compressor that that that's too much detail for the board to be looking at what we need to be reassured of is that there's a system in place we have two professional engineers they have a good sense of of who the vendors are out in the in the state they're working on a five-year maintenance plan for the building um I'm kind of curious. I'm assuming that you probably walk through just yourselves with your own expertise, but you may even pull someone in that, I don't know, does grooves. I don't, well, I don't yeah, know thank how you, to, thank that you bring that up. Works, and, and you know but, the answer to that already, and I appreciate you bringing that up. And yes, we do. Um, well, I want to clarify something. I'm not a licensed engineer in Vermont. Okay. And, and neither is West. Or well, neither is West. Thanks for calling me a PE in Vermont, but I'm not. <laughs> okay. Um, the, uh, the the reference that, that you have is I think it's your your you call them EL two point three and two point six I believe mm -hmm. and those do they they put they put very clear procedures that we have to follow and and I don't know if you know Robin Penbrook but can she she'd be really testy okay <laughs> and if we don't follow those procedures. She's all over us, and if we push back too hard on her, he gets Mr. She gets Mr. Millington involved in it. Okay, so we, we follow those procedures religiously. Um, she has a button on her desk that says no as soon as we walk in. <laughs> yeah, she does. She does that. That's how we start our yeah. meetings. And she sees me walk in there, and she just looks at me and says no. <laughs> um, and, but I, I like that. Okay, I like that. But, but there is there are the processes and procedures that we but follow. But aside but aside from that, I think maybe part of your question too is. If we don't know something, we're going to reach out to get advice also to help us be guided. Assess on the kind of where are we at? Good. What's yeah. what's the yeah. next thing that might For fall apart? For all these apart. projects, we brought a third party <laughs> engineer in here. Mm -hmm. All right, because that protects. You know, folks asked. I think, I think Miss Sarah asked me in a phone call what how we prioritize or what we do, and. Health and safety, of course. But the next one is we, we're, we're, our job is to protect the assets of this district, okay? And, and we do that. We do that we do, with due diligence. And um, so before we do anything structurally, anything, we, we bring a third-party engineering group in. And it's similar to the project for the new school. Because we have a, a, an architect, we have a... Uh, civil engineering associates that are coming in, and um, and that's going to be a big project. So, does that mean that they're going to be awarded part of the project if if we do decide to go? go I don't know. I doubt it because none of those guys are big enough to do a project of that uh, that, uh, that enormous. So, um, but anyway, does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Thank you. In addition to what you said, though, Ann, I personally think it's important to say that while our monitoring is up here. It is not necessarily um, an implication of distrust or or um, assumption of wrongdoing to ask for more detail or to have. You'll see in in what Sarah and I have been working on in the annual agenda, um, proposing that part of the quarterly facilities monitoring report is inviting these two gentlemen to come in and allow us to ask questions that on a day to day basis. No, our, our monitoring is up here. But I, I just, I, I think it's worth saying out loud that asking for more information or even, hmm, that doesn't sound right to me, that's part of our job. And it's not, that doesn't necessarily mean we think someone is being, is bad at their job or doing something underhanded or, or illegal or negligent. Um, but I- We welcome that. It, yeah, and I think, and also so this is very to, transparent. If, the conversation if you want that to we're, meet with us, if you need to talk to us at any time, just let us know, and we'll yeah. come to every meeting if you need us here. 
Oh, we'd never do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Thank> you. <It's, laughs> we like you too much for that. Thank you. So, so most, um, just for comparison, um, and some of this was the policy governance. So when I first started, uh, I'll call it board version 1L, um, there were, and it was probably holdover from um, the, the previous superintendent, but, you know, the, the principals would come in and talk, and I think probably Robin, you know, would come in during the budget presentations and, and things like that prior to. But as people were interpreting the policy governance piece, it's like, oh, if, if Millington is the, you know, sole point of contact for operations, then maybe we, we shouldn't be talking with. And so there was a weaning back of the folks that were coming in to talk. Um, it is, in my experience, it is highly unusual um, that the, you know, it's usually the business manager that's talking budget. Um, it's usually, you know, facilities are there, you know, especially if there are projects and things going on that folks are interested in. Um, there are other people at the table. Um, it's not unusual if, to, to, to say that. So if folks are asking for that, they're perfectly appropriate. It's a normal model in most places. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it was just the policy governance piece that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I know we have a lot to talk about tonight, but I just, ha I have a couple questions. Um, do you guys like look around and say, this is what's going to be the next big catastrophe? Absolutely. We try to. Yeah. What do you think is the next one? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you How many hours? I would not be employed here. Uh, <laughs> I'd be a multi-millionaire right now. Stock market. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's. I mean, do you have a list, like a going list? Right here. Like, okay, <laughs> this is number one, this is number seven, this is number three. Un and number unfortunately, two. and actually, we had this conversation with Mr. Millington and Heather the other day. Um, we try to be very proactive, but unfortunately, with this district, every day we are so reactive because. The water main breaks. The you know the access control has gone down in this building. Whatever that is, that it's so hard to. We don't have time to really forecast what's going to be the next big one because we don't really know. Um, especially with five buildings, you just don't know. Um, so the last ten maybe days, maybe an indicate or, or an example. In the last ten days, we lost the. Um, heat pump uh, in the hot the last week we lost the heat pump the AC mm -hmm. for the main office and we lost culinary program at RTCC's freezer compressor okay and that took it took time to, to, to get the resolution for that um, so so then in the middle of all of that mm -hmm. there's a teacher history teachers or whoever has a classroom and they're like I want this to be moved around because this right. group of we students need this. Like, that. how does that yeah. fit in? Does well, it we fit just, in? We just have to deal with it. Sometimes we go to that teacher and and ask for adaptability and patience, and almost one hundred percent of the time we get it. We we have good guys that work, good crew you know, and how work many with do us. Have? Not enough. Yeah, no, um, no. We we have two two maintenance slash custodial staff on. During the daytime, that handle work orders. I believe I made a note in the report. It might have been on top that they um, first line. Yep. They completed 253 jobs. We declined two requests from us um, out of uh, 287 that were submitted. So some of them just take time to get to. Um, we again prioritize with what we can do. Um, we fix the broken toilet as opposed to moving a cabinet if that's what it comes to. Right. But when we can, we get there. Um, so, so you those have two guys, people that work for you during the days, and then you have a nighttime staff. We do have a nice time staff of uh, four, five, six, seven people. And one person is cleaning both Braintree and Brookfield School by himself currently. And it's just um, a lot. It's, yeah, they're overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, so, do you, so 
there must be like job, job listings out there. We've been trying. We, we've been we're trying. We're we did actually make one new hire just recently. Um, he's actually started just this week. Yeah. Andrew Davis, he's a former Tuesday of this week. You asked about prioritization. This is how we prioritize. Uh, now, I don't want this to generate a bunch of questions because I have to leave. I've got an early morning tomorrow. <laughs> but, um, and your pastime. We, we are trying to recruit additional staff, and we are proactively working with Mr. Millington and Rob and Pembroke to expand the, the uh, budget. Does anyone else want to speak in? You know, so that we can hire additional staff. We can't get any staff. We advertise and we get I nobody. Get it. I get it. And we actually and look outside of the box and we thought about hiring our custodial staff or janitorial staff and uh, with, a, with a, an outside source. And that got shot down. And union 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 with a union. union. Yeah. It's part of the union said no to that. So, so you know, we, 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 we're as creative as we can be. We've got good people, and they do the best they can do, but we can still only do so you much in a day. People. Yeah, we've had that discussion. We've talked about two, two in the budget, but we also got to be able to fill up the ranks um, that, are, that are open to us. Thank you for coming in. Roger that. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You very much. See you later. Have a good evening. Your time and for your. Work. Remind your mom I want my cookies. Okay. <laughs> Haley's stapler is broken. Can you get on that first? <laughs> See you guys. Thank, See you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, we're only a little bit behind. Uh, moving on to monitoring. So these are both policies 4.2 and 4.3. We have 15 minutes uh, uh, allotted to this topic, and I'd like to keep it to that if we can. Um, uh, yes. So, dun, 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 dun. where are my charts here? All right, starting with 4.2. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just gathering my thoughts here. We're good. <laughs> Too many pages. Board job description. Here we are. Right? 4.2. We have our charts. Someone kick us off here. You want to give us your scores? The always, most of the time, some of the time, never. If anybody wants to bring up where our specific, I won't say problem areas, but in need of most uh, improvement, that might be a, a good way to efficiently um, and productively move, move through this. Yeah. In, in terms of board job description, we're good at some things. We could, we're not as good at others. Um, all right, then I'll start. Um, I mm -hmm. think that we are being proactive by um, doing that superintendent evaluation that we've been working on. Um, by meeting with the Vermont School Board Association. Um, one thing I feel that I wish we could improve on, I felt personally leaving that conversation with when we met remotely. You were a part of that, right? With, or was it just, no, it was Chelsea, Yourself. Anne, and I. Mm -hmm. um, I felt that I wish we could somehow involve the stakeholders more in that process. Which, like the community members, yeah, the teachers, yeah. The students. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of a bummer <laughs> um, for me. And I've been trying to think of ways we could involve them more in that. But I just, I feel like her answer was kind of just matter of fact that it's hard for them to be involved in that process because of how they don't understand the way the evaluation really works. That was what I got, I got from it. Which kind of speaks to how are we reporting to the owners on 
performance or how are we um yeah. the ownership linkage piece of it right for sure you know i said i thought we did a good start with the portrait of a graduate and we're working on that but how are we educating owners on issues and how are we reporting to the owners and i the only thing i can come up with is just you know, our little letter that we sent out to the public, I think people really appreciated that, like doing one maybe at the beginning of school, the beginning of the next semester, the beginning of the summer, just kind of telling people what we're doing. I think people would read it. Mm -hmm. And I think that goes kind of a long way. That's one way. Um, yeah, other suggestions I'm for sure I mean, open I to. I know it's a requirement of open meeting law, but I mean, I, I think obviously our meetings too would be considered in just general, like our school board meetings, the fact that we are, mm -hmm. you know, actively trying to engage public comment and actively, you know, trying to send out notifications of meetings. And I, I, I think we just don't, not losing sight of that too, that even that, even that is a way for owners to be able to access the school board too. Yeah, although it occurs to me that engaging people in different ways, reaching people in different ways, how easy would it be for me to, you know, copy and paste the warning into Front Porch Forum like we did that letter? Because I, too, think that people had a really good response to it, acknowledging that we want to reach them. I think that was really heard and how transparent we are trying to be and I think frequency I like this idea I don't know why you know it seems like such a novel idea but we should regularly send out something like this hey this is we said we were going to work on this this is where we're at right we said we were going to do a superintendent evaluation we are and this is what mm -hmm. is happening with it we are mm -hmm. doing these other committees the ends the end which is huge yeah. I mean let's be real we're that is where we are hopefully, um, representing what they want us to guide the district to do. Right. And I think often <clears throat> people don't really know. I mean, yes, they have access to the meetings. They could come and watch them. But meeting people where they are in a conversation, you know, mm -hmm. this is what we're doing. I think a lot of people don't understand the complaint process. They come and they're like, oh, this is driving me crazy. I'm like... This is the process. You have to do this and this and this in order to get to the board. So you have to do these things and not everybody quite understands that or has the patience to go through that process. And I So again, if if we did do a Trump Porch Forum monthly, hey, our meeting's coming up. Um this is the agenda and um there is a public comment. We always invite people for public comment, FYI. This is our official complaint procedure so that, you know, kind of hint, hint, public comment isn't only meant to be yeah. a place for people to come and complain. Although, please do, you know. Yeah. If but if calls. you don't like this thing that's happening in your school, you have to go talk to your teacher and then you have to talk to your principal and then you have to talk to the superintendent. It's not going to just come to have a conversation with somebody. <laughs> right. I mean, it's got to be like those three things mm -hmm. have got to happen before it can be on the agenda or a, a hearing can happen or anything. And I think the more we talk about that process, the more people will know that that's what they have to do. It would be also very beneficial to the community and the morale of at the schools for it not to be discussed on social media and rather for us to explain the process to yeah, using I mean, this that system rather all, than right. just yeah. complaining That's about it. Mm -hmm. They're, they're I, just I, talking about it and not, you know, using the tools that we're offering that we have to do. Mm -hmm. have we, we now have an, a, a parent advisory board in for each of the schools in our district now, correct? Mm -hmm. So that might be information that we might want to gather from the administration to sort of help, because some of these complaints may be things that people 
because it's more at the building level mm -hmm. and they may and to sort of help get the word out you know you have concerns about because oftentimes and it makes it a little bit uncomfortable when we say come to our meetings come to our meetings and then they come and they're like you know what's happening in the recess or whatever you know it's particular to a building and a certain issue and I'm thinking these advisory I think to just share you know hey folks we're trying to engage the community we've got advisory committees in each of the districts or each of the schools here are some of the things that they're looking at and working with the administration on. If you have feedback, here's how to do it. And that's just the board working along with the administration in terms of helping people know where and at what level your, you know, what your concern is. Is it a concern that is at the board level or is it really more of a concern at your local school level? Provide so people that, with the resources. Yeah, yeah. So then they're not that like, huh, I came to the board or I emailed the chair and they just said, here's the complaint procedure. And if you're concerned about your school, then start with the teacher or whatever. And they sort of come away feeling like, or they come to public comment and we can't really have a dialogue with them. We're just sort of like, thanks for your comment. And it feels, one, as a board member, it feels kind of, uh, and I think for the person coming, I think they feel like, what, what, is, what is this board doing? You know what I mean? So I think that could be a great um, addition to our, our linkage with the ownership is letting them know these other ways, because it may not be a complaint. They may have things, ideas that they want to share and encourage in their different schools. I don't know. So if I may propose, because I'm trying to be a real time taskmaster here, because I want to be able to talk about the other policy, but I'm, I'm thinking if, not to vote on now, but if, if people want to think about kind of another subcommittee um, to put together an almost calendar of, hey, maybe this can go out in October and then maybe ch like Chelsea and I did with, with Ben, work on a, a mid-year letter or something like that, kind of give assignments and a calendar to do so. Ah, so what I was wondering is for these letters, maybe we should put them on the yearly agenda. Mm -hmm like a month before they are going to go out or two months even to start the committee to draft one. <laughs> so it doesn't always have to be maybe the same people. It could be like, okay, I volunteered to do it this time. That's a good As idea. part of the ownership linkage plan, yeah. Communication to community. Like newsletter. Like the end of the semester. Newsletter. Like as the semester ends. Before the next and semester. so what is the process with that that we would do now that Ben is not here? Would we just, he would be just like a subcontractor? You can still use Ben. Yeah. Yeah. We, we still use him for the, you know, he actually just emailed me this morning. Um, we can use um, him for the annual reports and things, but he's quite happy. Yeah. Um, okay. he'll, he'll usually produce a little contract. He's got an hourly rate and, and that's what we pay. Uh, but he's a, he's a really good resource. So what is that get submitted? Because I don't ever so, see that. What's or, that? We, we, don't, we didn't see that. Which piece? The contract That's with the fee fine. and whatever. That's, that's just so part of the pri office. So or? prior to this year, um, we had a website that was a proprietary system. And so we had a contract. He There was only one person who knew how to actually change anything on the website. That was Ben. Um, and so we had an co hourly contract with him for that. Um, with the website that we have now where we can do our own. Um, he is not on contract with us, but we can easily, you know, connect with him about his hourly rate to get stuff done, you know. And usually it's, uh, you know, he would give us, uh, I don't know what you call it, 
not a quote, but he, he'd give us, you know, we'd outline what we want and he would give us a little report that we'd sign off on and agree to terms in terms, you know, how okay. much per hour, how much for the project. So maybe for that calendar, Hold like if we're going to send a letter out in August, then the committee should be formed in um, June, June, mm -hmm. right? And then the same, if we're going to send one out in January, it should be formed in November. November. And then if we're sending one out in June, it should be formed in whatever. I don't know. <laughs> uh, April, May, June. Yeah, April. I, right. I think if we're developing kind of a newsletter type of format, like where there's some kind of consistency to the information shared or like a structure to the information shared, mm -hmm. that might be best. And I think that we can do that with like without outside support. We know we're the experts about what's happening here. I I and, have yeah. And and the looking back at the letter that was drafted we earlier this summer, we just changed the whole thing anyway. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should True. come up with a format for like the, the next one. We can look at this one and say, this is what we said here. Maybe we should have like a consistent format for each going forward. And then we can just kind of fill in the information. So maybe we put it on the agenda for next time. Yes. Month and consider a subcommittee next mm -hmm. time. That might, mm -hmm. like, so it's easy to kind of plug the pieces in that we yeah. want. Yeah, that's a good idea. Make sure everybody hears that. It follows something almost like your s'more newsletter. That's what we were just saying. Right, yeah. We have a... a product that folks could use to send it out that Heather actually had the good idea of a, few, a year or so ago to bring in. Um, you could easily be trained on that and that way it's a consistent format. It's meant for publication, for easy reading, for um, that, that would be a bad thing. I know, yeah. go out from mm -hmm. Hannah as you a chair. You can set up the you wanted yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Secretary. So that's on the agenda for next time. <laughs> that will be on the agenda for next time, which is a fabulous segue into our next policy that we can have a short discussion about because I do, we can talk about a, a bunch of stuff in here whenever people want to, but I do want to highlight um, number three, which is submissions for the agenda, no later than five days before the agenda is to be warned. Anybody here can request for something to be on the agenda. Um, me and Chelsea and Lane and Heather meet and we put the, oh, but yeah, we put the, um, we have the agenda planning meeting a week before, well, two weeks before the meeting, yeah. but that's a week before the warn, week and a half. Yeah, it's usually we, we warn it like 48 ahead of time. Has to be warned okay. 48 hours yeah. ahead of time. So okay, so the five days. day thing is yeah. still okay. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, and also just in terms of number two, the annual agenda shall include consultations with selected groups. Um, I don't know, I didn't grade us real high on so far doing that, but uh, I think Sarah and I are trying to put that stuff in there. Well, that's that ownership linkage plan, like going out and having a plan for reporting on the ends mm -hmm. and maybe not necessarily planning on doing it in a meeting, but sort of having an event or having, you know, somehow coming up with a way to get that information out to people. The news, yeah. The news yeah. Yeah. Newsletter. Um, uh, focus group. Uh, yeah, and, and um, Lane invited, and I know, Anne, you've done it before as well, Chelsea, you're at a speak at the um, the top of the in-service week before the school year started, and I've had several staff members come up to me and, and just say something about thanks for telling us what you guys are going to be focusing on. I mean, it was basically based on the community letter. Um but I think taking advantage of opportunities like that, and thank you for inviting us to do things like that. Um, there, you know, we got to think of ways to get to the community outside of the school community, but we've definitely got to take advantage of the opportunities with the school community as well for us to be speaking to them, sharing. What about with them. like setting up? This is just, this is crazy. 
that, but like yeah. setting up at the big sporting days, like the one, the big one that happens in the fall with a bonfire, like a table where we're a school board table and people can come and talk to us or at a basketball, like see a pink day when that happens, or I don't know, other things that happen in town, just, you know, saying I'm on the school board, ask me what I do. Yeah, I mean, I the only hesitancy I have with something like that is the speaking as one mm -hmm. um, uh, boundary. Well, I can't think of a good word. Um, that if someone starts a one-on-one -on -one conversation and wants more information about a particular topic, there is, a, at least for me, if I'm getting into a conversation, it is very hard, unless I'm in this format, to remember that I am not just speaking for me, which is why I try not right. to get into so, any conversation right. with anyone. But I, so I think the, the training for that would be, you know, we're going to be presented with some people who are upset about whatever. And we just, Mostly this listen. is the complaint process. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, what we do. If you go through these steps, you can come to the school board and add it to the agenda. Like these are the, this is how you, this is how you work within the system. Mm -hmm. Not, oh my God, I totally agree with like whatever grievance it is that you have and how, you know, it's easy to do that sometimes. But I think um, for this purpose, it would be sort of a public face, just kind of engaging with whoever is around. I mean, you're also a target for people who are really angry, and I don't know. I kind of feel like that's kind of our job sometimes is to hear that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I think it's a great idea. I just don't think I should be at the table. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe we I do it. Maybe we do it in yeah, a groups of two or yeah. groups of three or something, so mm -hmm. it's easier to so we have someone there with us who also understands. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I don't think it should be at every single basketball game or every single soccer night or whatever, but maybe those big ones. I think there's one in the fall, spring. In the new field house this time. Right. Yeah. But I don't know if we want to start that soon, like at the fall. Is there, isn't there a bonfire some, some day where there's games all day and then a, yeah. when is that? Do you know? I don't know. I have to look on the app. They usually do heads up just before. But like, do we have a banner that says OSSD board? Should we get t-shirts made? Like, those are things that I think that we should have. <laughs> there's there's a lot. Great. I think we should have a t-shirt that says OSSD board and then has a bullseye in the back. <laughs> bullseye. <laughs> yes, yeah. You could get the dunk exactly. tank going. They could start <laughs> there's a lot it's of like board <laughs> member. town meetings going on right now um, in Randolph, especially like around the police force and things like that. You know, if, if board members are there, you're going to be bumping in with different segments of the community that you might not. And the T-shirts are actually a really good idea. You know, you might just be able to strike up conversations with folks. In the I'll get the T-shirt design. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> joking about about the bullseye. No, I, I don't think it's a good joke. idea. <laughs> I think it would be good I, comic relief. For I mean, I it doesn't think have to be serious. We, and it doesn't have to be time. serious. I think if we're going to do that, it has to be something that we plan. We're going to go to this meeting or we're going to go to this bonfire or we're going to, because again, representing the board mm -hmm. and not just ourselves. Yeah. It, because I wanted to go to that police committee meeting, which I didn't end up being able to do, but I was going to go as me, not as yeah. a member yeah. of the board. And I think if I'm going to, we have to remember that if we're going to go somewhere and say, I am here yeah, as board. a board member, everybody in this room is also at that meeting as a board member, at that event as a board member, being represented by the person who's there. Well, so you I can't, think, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Ann. I was just going to say, I think I think just randomly showing up with, with no sort of idea of what you want to share I don't, I, I think, I think we need to plan a little bit with, you know, here's some things that we're working on or sharing some information like, I don't know if we want to share, you know, our, we have been looking at our asset management uh, policy and we have this older building and there's stuff coming down from the state. 
um, to sort of have something that we're sort of reporting out to the community on, not just sort of coming out and <laughs> kind of oh like, my gosh, we okay, could just make up a here one we go. Sheet or like, we're looking at replacing the facility. We've started the, the conversation. Like, you can't say the process because we haven't really, but we're looking at our ends. We're, you know, like right. five bullets on a half a sheet and of paper. And maybe have the ends go. out there, what we're, you know, what we're trying to merge together or, or do a, sur you know, have a link to a survey. You want to give us some feedback on what we're thinking of doing for an, for an end. I don't, I don't know because I got to wait for the ends committee to report. But, um, you know, we have things that we're working on that I think we need, we need to report out. We have ends reports that we get. You know, we're going to have a budget that we're going to be putting together and approving. You know, do we want to talk a little bit about the budget? So um, who, who, when, when, when you did the uh, evaluation, who was supposed to be presenting the budget to the community? Well, in our in our system, the way it's set up, it falls on you. In the primarily state, in the state system that falls on the board i'm happy to do it so i'm just the board I'm just, approves i'm just it, throwing it out but i'm saying this is a this is a way together. that the board could right but it is exactly and we can work with you because you want understand and robin understands the ins and outs of the specifics of the budget and then we can go out i mean if we approve it then the assumption is we are going to help to encourage folks to take a look at it and understand why we approved it and what we're aiming for and you know but it's that kind of information I think the board needs to be proactive in in getting out not just sitting at a table waiting for people to come in and say oh you're not doing this right or whatever I think um, Lane just brought up a very good point of um, maybe we should be a little more involved with some budget information and knowledge because that is Absolutely. a huge question our community, I feel, has. So, yeah, taxpayers. Yeah, I mean, I well, think, and I'm I just do... thinking about that, you know, I think that one thing I want this group to think about is the um, the idea of having subcommittees that are that are um, always subcommittees wow, my language standing isn't working committees. standing committees thank you so that there would be a budget committee and maybe that mm -hmm. just has two people on it but boy those would be the people to sit during budget season season mm -hmm. at that table and say hey this is what we're doing and you can ask pretty meaty questions about it and those are the two people that would be able to speak that's yeah. just an idea maybe to i'm planting a seed to it would add trust future to the discussion um, because if i'm the one that's doing all the presentation and holds all the knowledge that would make anybody nervous right, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's why i you know most boards do they they have three or four different standing committees and the budget is one of them what are the others um, yeah, they have uh, facilities and the facilities planning committee. They have a committee that um, is preparing always for negotiations um, with the union. And in some cases, it's correct. You know, uh, so. But I think it's important for all board. We don't have a huge board. I think it's important for all board members to be educated on all of these different aspects of running this district. Of course, and, those and not just relying on one or two meeting. because they tend to like numbers or, you know, somebody likes to do facilities. I think having that overall big picture is the role of board members also. Yes, I think and, it you and can those get lost in this. would be in charge of right. educating, taking some of the onus off of Lane to come back to the larger meetings and say, "Hey, like we're about to do in our next uh, 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 agenda item, this is the meaty subject we're going to bring to you with a little bit more detail." But really relying on those that subcommittee 
and you call us in and say you're the you're the experts it's the subcommittee kind of like a senate hearing you know what are your recommendations right. what are your thoughts and it's it's information but the decision piece is 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 a little bit more shared mm -hmm. right? um, typically you know the budget like i said under the, under the states typically the boards um, and so that would be awesome there is a lot of work that this position has had for the the time that i've been here that superintendents are involved in but don't do um, so it, it's been quite a challenge to try to balance it all. So I, I would actually appreciate the subcommittee work and, you know, yeah. We just need to remember, we've got to warn all those to remember. Mm -hmm. By open meeting law, they're supposed to be Subcommittees? Yes. Yeah. Sub, so subcommittees that do not, do not have the power of the board, the authority of the board to act for the board, and do not contain a quorum are not Really? Are, they're not, not required to be one. They are recommended by the VSBA Correct. to be open, but they are oh. not required to be. By law. If you don't have a oh, yes, nice. By so statute. If you don't have a statute and you don't have so the power to act for the board. But, if it's under but, but mission wise, if you want people to be involved, mm -hmm. if the goal is for I think that's why it's recommended by the VSBA. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But the idea being that that subcommittee is kind of doing the, in the weeds <laughs> stuff and then reporting in the public mm -hmm. meeting board. exactly yeah. what happened and not, no decisions are made it's just no a, decisions the decision is made by the board oh well that's news to me because in the training i was in they said all committees all board committees have to be warned so but maybe that's that might be new i don't My it's, it's not, not, not an expert it's in the statute now. okay thanks for clarifying that and speaking of subcommittees, let's jump uh, to the next agenda item. Thank you, everyone, for the obvious work done at home for those two, for 4.2 and 4.3. Um, what are we going to, before we move on, mm -hmm. are we going to collect these? Are we just going to, because that has been the other problem with these, is we kind of like that, whatever. <laughs> oh, we I don't think do it's it a again. one word. On, I see these charts as a, a jumping off point. For so discussion. That for discussion, yes. and then I think for both policies, we came out with, with actionable mm -hmm. things to consider. Chelsea? So I think the notes, I mean, I'm taking my own notes, right, <clears throat> when we go to our agenda planning meeting, we can talk about the things that we talked about and if they need to be added to the agenda or whatever. But mm. um, so far from this discussion, we've talked about the newsletter subcommittee on, on the agenda, maybe for next time, and adding it to the calendar. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and then the t-shirt design and the fall events, winter events, I put that on my list just because I think if we don't start doing that. There's not a social <laughs> subcommittee, Chelsea, but if there, there were. Be, <laughs> um, there could be an outreach subcommittee, right? Okay. There yeah. could be. Yeah. I like that. Uh, and then the standing committees as an idea, which I think is a great idea. Budget, facilities, negotiations, curriculum. I'm going to write outreach because that would for sure jump up yeah. our... Thank you. What do we always talk about? Ownership linkage. Mm -hmm. Now that now, Anne, if you would like to, if we'd like to collect them, then I can consolidate them so people. No, I'm, don't feel I'm like just their specific notes are. We got a filing cabinet yeah. there somewhere we can put them on. <laughs> Around the shaped ones. No, I'm kidding. Um, so I do feel like some of the input that we get from the sheets and people talking does get. Put into the yeah. notes and the minutes and the ideas for next time. Mm -hmm. Do we need more than that? Do you think? Uh, Peter's not. I think we're all right. All right. Uh, so, moving on to subcommittee reports. This is meant to be a verbal report. Um, you know, five minutes each. Uh, if there were things that wanted to be shared, that should be done as materials for the meeting. So this is more of what kind of progress have you made and what, what, uh, where are you at? Um, so the superintendent evaluation process, I have Chelsea on here to report. Yeah. So I talked to Sandra and she said everybody should have gotten, um, we met with Sandra and she 
outlined the whole process for us, which is basically she sends out a survey to um, Lane as a self-evaluation, but then the board and the people that directly work with him. So that would be administrative people, the principals, the people in the offices, the facilities guys. I'm not sure who else. I can't remember. All Is there the anybody departments, else? All of the departments that he's yeah. So that, that's transportation. The transportation. Yeah. So there's about, about a dozen of them. Yeah. Oh. Um, and she then said, all the board members. Yep. Yeah, she said the current response rate as of September 11th was four of the 19 administrative people. So that was 23%. Two of the eight board members, which was 25%. Um, that Lane had not done his self-evaluation, but he has since done that. No, that was, she confirmed that I had submitted it this oh. morning. You guys were on the email. Mm -hmm. uh, well, no, I got that, but I, and I knew that you had done it, but I didn't, maybe when she sent this out, you hadn't yet, or it was a mistake or something. Anyway, she said, we generally consider 60% to be a fair response. So I guess if she gets 60% by tomorrow or 80% is better, I thought she was going to close it on the 15th. 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 Yeah, Friday. Yeah. Isn't that Friday? Friday. Oh, I thought it was thinking yeah. tomorrow was Friday. No. Nope. Yeah, Friday. Slow down. <laughs> so, so if you haven't done it, do it because it's great information. Um, and then once the survey is closed, uh, sh she's going to summarize all of the information into a report and set up a meeting with the committee and the superintendent. Um and that we'll we'll talk about, you know, themes and goals, possible possible goals for this next year. And then she's going to draft a final report. And that we can take all of that to this meeting okay. and talk about it. And come up with. I mean, I guess we just look at it with Lane and say these are what we want for goals for this next year. And then we take this next year to evaluate it and reassess it at the end of the year, which would be end of the summer, I guess, or be September. Usually the best thing is that sure. if you're going to do like a, the survey that they're recommending, if that's the baseline is just, just pick the same week every year um, to do so, it. So it seems to me that since we've started it, that it should be happening every single year going yeah. forward so that. It's just a part of the yearly agenda, and it's part of the input into job performance and goals and direction and ends and all of it kind of goes with this. Like, I'd say we do it in June because as the, you know, we're going to set these goals now with him at the next meeting or so, right? So then yeah. we're going to go through the year. And, and at the end of the year is basically June. School year. School year. Yeah. Because otherwise, like even when we were trying to figure out who to send it to, we're at the beginning of a new year right. now and people that Our, he worked yeah. with are gone. You know? yeah. So I think if we get, we get it regularly set up for the, for June and then use that the results, the June results to then set the goals for the coming school year. Big thing for Night. me is as long as the goals are set before we start or, or before the budget process is complete, because if there are things that are going to require resources to be able to accomplish on behalf of the board, I've got to be able to start working that into the budget, which starts October 1st. Um, I think my only concern is um, I think the last time this was done was right when when we started as board members mm -hmm. and it felt very as a new board member i remember getting the survey and i was like i've been on this board i've gone to two board meetings like mm -hmm. i don't feel like i have a base of which i can provide feedback because i just didn't have a familiarity with it so i would just caution if we're going to do that recognizing that who if there are new board members joining in march if it's completed by June and we're sending it out maybe in April, May, those board members may not feel that they have the ability to, to really provide feedback. Yeah, she talked okay about that. For 60% of the board to at least yeah. maybe excuse the ones that... Yeah, there's a, there's a not, a not 
uh, not enough information yeah, I remember I was like, in I there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that's fine as long as we're just aware and like when those right. new board members come on board, kind of help them understand the expectation is that you may not feel that this this round right. kind of you can participate as much as you will next year, but this is right. what we do annually. And yeah. it may be no, helpful for to them know, to just even sure. look at the questions so they know what, you know, what the kinds of things that we're for looking next at. year. Yeah. yeah. That um, so that's the thing that we contract with the BSCA to help us run, I think is the best way to do it because then it's outside people coming in and it's sort of a neutral group. Mm -hmm. So that's something to also when we're figuring out the, um, the budget for us, um, that we're budgeting that in yeah. annually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not expensive, fifteen hundred dollars which I think is worth it. For something so yeah. important. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, Rachel, would you like to report out for sure. the ENDS subcommittee? Yeah. Um, we met and talked about and, and looked at the data that's been collected primarily through the portrait of the graduate about the ends. We're trying to be a little bit more prescriptive because we feel like our, I think the board has said we feel like our ends policy is too general and leads a bit in too broad. So we're trying to figure out how to be more prescriptive and incorporate the information that we have about what the community values. And we've started with what looks like, um, you know, moving foundational knowledge to the, to the forefront of our policy. Potentially, you know, and this will all be presented to the board to be discussed further. Um, foundational knowledge breaking out into academic um, foundational and life skills foundational and then enumerated with specific topics like ELA, math, science, social studies, and then under life skills, communication, um, citizenry. <clears throat> world languages, creative expressions, okay. the arts, financial literacy, digital literacy. But there's more work to be done. So, so thank you. Okay. Progress work is, work is Work is ongoing. Questions for from anyone ongoing. for that subcommittee? So will you guys meet, like, again, every, like, every month or? Yes. Yeah. So we're... we're Thinking maybe two more times before our next, definitely at least once more before our next board meeting, but probably two more times, so and we can do, so we can bring kind of a something to be considered and right. honed and by the honed by the rest of the board. And when when the board accepts it, then then it has to be it's a, it would be policy, but it, it has to be, be read policy. twice, so it will be like at least three board meetings from now. Right. And Before he's it. working on his budget, or at least Starting thinking at it. First, and yeah. one of the things that we're going to be evaluating him on is meeting these new ends. So, but my guess is they're not particularly. They're they're, they're not going to be at like a right turn from what we all right. have. They're just right. going to be more more specific. There's there are no right. surprises. We have the portrait of graduate document that we're working off of. Right. Can I ask an embarrassing question? Can we just say who's on these committees? Because I just don't feel like I know who's on your subcommittee. Yes, I think we formed them at the last meeting. And right. maybe I wasn't here. here. Right. Oh my God. Crazy situation. Um, Anne and Sarah and I are on the superintendent evaluation. Mm -hmm. If you want to jump on any of these committees, feel free. <laughs> Thank you. If, you. if you add to a subcommittee, we may have a quorum. <laughs> uh, it is, good point. It is... Hannah, Meg, and I on the on the end subcommittee, and Heather. Yes, but she's As not a board member. Yes, but she yep. she joins in the discussion. Yes, yeah. Hopefully. Okay, thank you. Uh, the annual agenda committee. Oh, the annual agenda committee is me and Sarah, um, and we uh, Anne shared her revised from that she put together last year and we've been adding to it um putting things in like uh principles kind of each school reporting to us each meeting and in fact um we would 
oh God, it's so the high school we would have in October coming to to um, report and kind of be open to review and report. No, attend and report. Um, if we wanted to do that for next meeting, we could maybe put it on the agenda. Um, but then we have all all of the schools in here in different months. We tried to work it so that like if the meeting was at the high school, then the high school would be the one reporting. It doesn't quite work out that way, um, but we tried real hard. We also- but we're not making Braintree go to Brookfield, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, now we are. Um, also in board education, we're trying to be very specific and for each meeting, have a topic that we are educating ourselves about. Um, one idea is I was looking at the VSBA website and they have these really helpful and informal, which is helpful to me, webinars um, about certain topics. So at this point, what we've been thinking about doing is each month having kind of the homework before that meeting being um, attending or reviewing, watching one of these webinars and then a conversation about it. Um, what we learned oh, as right. part of board education. The, the webinars? webinars? It did a couple of them last year, and I want to say one of them was for new board mm -hmm. members, so that one was quite lengthy, but on the, I think on the average, I would say about 45 to an hour and a mm -hmm. half. Um, for the new school board members, those are two hours and in, I believe, two parts. So that's a little more of a commitment. But right now, we don't really have a lot of new. That would probably be a, a separate thing anyway. For the new yeah. members coming on. Mm -hmm. But I also think, yes, two-hour webinars are hard to sit through. But I, I also think that saying we're going to commit to that kind of training and education every month and and bring it back here and and talk about you know open meeting laws is one of the webinars i think that can only help us it comes up at least once a meeting hey are we wait do we have a quorum um so one to two hours in that month but i won't speak for everyone but i kind of feel like that's that's appropriate reasonable. That's reasonable. Yeah. Oh, reasonable thank you um so I guess the the one thing we need to know is if people are interested in, and I, I think we have, as a board, have agreed this, in, in having principals and maybe a principal and a student, we'd leave that up to the principals, attend and, and report, not read their principal report, but just kind of review what's going on and give us an opportunity to engage with them. And if that's the case, if we can go ahead and, I don't know if we vote on it as an agenda item for next month. Also, I'd like to put on the agenda for next month, Sarah and I actually presenting this document that we're working on for the board's mm -hmm. review and consideration. That's 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 we have a big meeting next time. <laughs> we're doing all the things we've been talking about doing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what, and what are they gonna report on? Just sort of what's going on in the schools? Kind of like, like what their projects that the school's doing together, anything, anything mm -hmm. really. Sort of like a, a in person, the newsletter. Do you, do yeah. you want for October? Just second heads up. The high school is who we had. Mm -hmm. so I think I need of course, it's in Braintree. It's going to be in Braintree. It's going to be in Braintree. Um, but then the November, we're suggesting it be RTCC. And that one is here, yeah. um, December oh, Randolph and or elementary, and that's where that one is. Oh, and January is Brookfield, and that's where that meeting is. So next week is the uh, only one that that didn't match. Yeah, what's that? Next month. Yeah. What did I say? Yeah. Week. Ah. So next time you want to review the yearly agenda and vote on it. Is that what you're just Not saying? vote on it right away. I'd want it to be in the materials for us to review and discuss and you guys suggest further edits or changes and then the following meeting to vote it in would Great. be my hope. Wait, are we going to be in Braintree next in October or at Randolph Elementary? I think we're at Randolph next week. 
I'm singing Randolph Elementary. Oh, do I have the wrong? I think we're in Braintree in January. We're in Braintree oh, in January. Now I'm just all mixed up. It's it's whatever you vote on for it to be. <laughs> Braintree was supposed to be August. It was supposed I believe, to be August, but there was something going didn't. on in the school, and it right, had, right. You know, we couldn't be in there. And October confused. Okay. We had some distractions when we were meeting, so Maybe we did. Fixed. Named my children and my dog. Sorry about that. Um, I think it was my dogs, your children. <laughs> oh, fair. Okay, yeah. that makes me feel better. Okay, well, um, then I need to look at where I made a yeah, mistake we'll, on this, we'll and then touch we'll, base we'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Ready to move on? Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Oh, we are on to advocacy. Um, determine hmm, beehive is bit. The SBA proxy. The um, oh, <clears throat> in this, uh, I know we need to vote. The conference is October twenty six and twenty seven. The information has not come in the mail yet, but I was asked to leave it on the agenda in case it did. Mm -hmm. okay. So okay, I don't have it. I didn't have any materials to show you because it has not arrived yet. Gotcha. So I'm not sure. They're just is, given the dates. Yeah. Well, and you can register for it. It's, you can. The PSBA has been and sending it out yeah, in our electronic newsletter. So oh, so we're getting it. Oh, so maybe, maybe it doesn't come in the mail anymore? I was told it came no, in the mail. Actually, email. 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 I bet you're not on the, I bet Linda's still on the, Yeah. Uh, that's probably what's happening. Carrie Lamb, I would get in touch with Carrie Lamb. I'll, I'll write it down to you yeah, to remember. Yeah. Okay, so. Can get you I don't know. You've got the information, so. So then. It's on October. 26, 27. 27. Mm -hmm. And um, I can share so with you the Lake, registration Lake link. Lake yeah. Should I register? I'm going to go. To, I can only go on the 26th. I'm, I'm, I'm already going. registered. Great. So I'm registered register. as well, and I've already created the PO for the invoice, so you don't have to worry about it. Just register, Yeah. and everything else will magically happen. Thank Except you. Except for your lodging. If you want lodging, you have to set that up. I wish. So it's the 26th and 27th? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yep. But then can we vote? Yeah. On the proxy? No, you have to assign someone to be the person who goes to the BSBA meeting and is the voting member. Yeah, they'll have so they'll they'll have a members meeting as a part of the conference. And gotcha. so your board would vote today for who is the voting member from this board to represent the board. Right. And you're voting on so those we, resolutions that come up. Right. So we are voting on the proxy tonight. Yes. 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 Okay. Do you know if it's the 26th or 27th that that meeting happens? Yeah. yeah. It's usually, the, the VPA ones are usually the first night. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that the... So it'll be a night that has it. I have this thing. Is my guess. I'm not 100% sure. She knows that I'm only going, who was who will be emailing with, knows I'm only going on the 26th. So hopefully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I there. will also mention really quickly that the regional meeting is tomorrow night. Um, and it's all virtual. It's Zoom. Uh, I registered for it. I think it's six o'clock. But yes, go to the VSBA um, website if you're interested. Highlighting the equity work. I forget. I'll look it up. They're going to highlight the equity work Thursday. Yeah. That's why they wanted to make sure that yeah, yeah. that you were there. Yeah, we've got the superintendent's conference tomorrow. Yeah. So let's close. Fine. If, if it's all right, um, the subcommittees, I, I haven't been showing up to the subcommittees unless I'm invited. Um, if you want me there, just ask. I'm happy to. Uh, but I also don't want to be, I can dominate things, so you might be better off. <laughs> um, okay. uh, so, but but if, if any of the subcommittees, if, if you feel it's important to have me there just for information or, or, or things like that, just, just let me know. I'm quite happy. Well, I think for sure you will be invited to the next subcommittee for the superintendent evaluation. I hope so. Just talking all about you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Um, so who do we need to who do we need to elect or nominate as a proxy? You? Me. Okay. So yeah. so moved. Thank you. So do I have a second? second? You can pick Sarah Rachel. Same they piece. said it at the same time. <laughs> Katya uh, moved and seconded. Okay. Um, further discussion? Have fun. All those in favor? Aye. Please aye. aye. Opposed? Great. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, okay. Consent agenda. 
Do we need to talk about any of these? Let's see, minutes, does anyone have? I have a couple things. Great. Sorry. No, you, I um, depend on you. For I was not here on the night, on that fateful evening, um, but my name is on here as an attendant, so. Well, just your first name, so. Yeah, just, I went incognito. <laughs> um, so I guess I would just request that this be edited to not have my name as a present board member. And then my other question was, what was the special board meeting on 8:23 at 2 p.m.? What was that? It was a committee meeting, I believe. But well, we also met to approve minutes from a special board meeting on 8:23. These are also the, um, the wrong dates here. So this is 8:9, 23, 8:23. I think that was, was, so was, think that was yeah. the superintendent evaluation. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So that was a special board. That, so that wasn't a, a special sub, board. Sub, meeting. Sub, 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 no, that was a special board meeting on Wednesday that we meant to have on Monday, but we were concerned it wasn't warned. That was Monday the twenty first. But it wasn't at two p.m. No, it, was it wasn't at two p.m. It was at six. Yeah. So the dates on here are incorrect on our agenda. Just FYI, we're in twenty three, not twenty two. Though it took me a moment to be like, am I in the wrong year? So. Oh, the years. The years are wrong. Read. And then okay. I'm assuming we did not have this special board meeting at 2 p.m. on the 23rd. That was a subcommittee meeting. That was the evaluation committee. So meeting. that wouldn't have minutes on oh, here. Oh, correct. Okay. Oh, yes. And then just in our our board packet, there's just no date on. I know I'm being really nitpicky here. There's no, no date on for our. I'm assuming this was our 823 special meeting where yes. the meeting was called to order at 6.04 p.m. And Chelsea moved and I seconded to add to enter executive session. And we just need to have a date, I think, on, on this to have this be considered a, like yeah. a valid. And that was 823. Document. So the second item under consent agenda approved minutes from special board meeting on the 23rd at 2 p.m. should not be there. There are no minutes. I'm just reviewing what Kathy just brought us through. There's an edit to the 8-9 minutes, the first item in the consent agenda, and that's just taking Katya's name out of the attendees. And for the third item, the minutes from the special board meeting, that document just needs to be dated. Yeah, and just noting that the date's on here. Like this says the years. The years. Yes. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm not seeing the years. I'm sorry. On the agenda. On the consent agenda, the dates say 8, 9, 22. Oh, sorry. That's just what was on the agenda. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I was looking at the minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And well, there is that one on the oh, other yeah. that has no date on it. Oh, yeah. The special that, board. That meeting. one's on me. They didn't give me a spot on the paper <laughs> and my <laughs> virtually. <laughs> okay, um, change of signers. Any questions or concerns there? <laughs> yes, please. I'm just curious why Linda's on here as a new signer if she's no longer. <laughs> she's just voted in treasurer. Until for the year. Until so, uh, or till March. Till March. Okay. okay. Thank yeah. you for so clarifying. So she's, she's continuing. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Appreciate it. Uh, facilities reserve funds requests. Do you just want to? Yeah, you want the, you want the, 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 the long version or the short? Oh, or, what do you think? <laughs> uh, well, the, the brain tree. So I'll, try, I'll shoot for the middle. Um, brain tree for folks that have, have been around for a while know about the massive water issues is that have been there for time out of mind. So this is this should Brookfield. be Brookfield. 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 Yeah. Brookfield. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yep. Brookfield. Um, we had run through, we had had uh, a bunch of engineers and geologists come out, um, take a look, and they had given us kind of a plan to follow to try to remediate the water issues, starting with the lowest cost option first. Lowest cost option was to try to reclaim the current well that was there. We tried that first. It didn't fix the problem. Um, the next option was to go and to drill a new well, which we tried. The water was even worse and radioactive. Um, which was interesting. So we did, when that happened, we went into the building, we did test for radon and, and stuff like that. And so the building is clean and, and clear. Um, so we've got water there. Um, you know, it's great for flushing toilets and things, but you can't use it for much more than that, maybe washing hands. Um, we've been providing drinking water through 
um, the portable bubblers um, that have been in there for a while. What we're trying to do um, is at least making sure that the critical areas like the kitchen have free flowing water that, that comes from the faucet. And so we're planning on putting in an osmotic system. So that will take everything out. Um, you know, it'll be pretty much the equivalent of distilled water when it comes to that osmotic system so that the kitchen can have it. Um, the only problems with the osmotic system, just so folks know, is there is an ongoing cost um, the concentration of the matter that's in the drinking water um, as it stands is so high that when we concentrate it through the osmotic system, right, so all the bad stuff gets concentrated, mm -hmm. um, it's pretty much going to have to be taken away as special waste. Um, so there will be a cost with that. It's not astronomical, but it is an ongoing cost that we're going to have to deal with. But this is um, to make sure, darn sure, that uh, you know the kitchen's got water. They don't have to be using it from the bottles or whatnot. So it'll only be in the kitchen? Not, uh, kitchen, not and I think they're trying to connect fountains, to connect the water fountains with it as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's part of the reason I'm stuttering a little bit is because there's so much to the story. I'm just trying to give the important pieces uh, over the years. I mean, it's, we definitely spent a pretty astronomical price on this building already just to try to fix this well issue. There, there is no good water to to be able to get into. Um, you know, the, we, we took the best shot with the geolo state geologist's advice and, and whatnot. And uh, so. So when we talk about a new facility for this, I'm assuming there's discussion regarding a new facility for our Brookfield community as well. Well, part of the part of the the discussion, and this is a bigger one for the community, has to be had because of the potential cost savings. But people aren't probably going to go for it. Is that we build a centralized campus and all students go to it, and then we convert RES into the new tech center. So I think that the satellite schools would go for that if there was adequate transportation mm -hmm. and adequate opportunities for participating in the extracurriculars and it served the students in a way that better serves them than now. Students will be better served. The, they've done a darn good job, the principals here, of trying to preserve equity between the three elementaries. But it's not perfect just because of the size differences. Um, it would improve the, the, the quality of education and especially the additional services that students need if everything was centralized. It would be a dramatic, and that's part of the study that you know Bob and Wes were talking about, is you know what would be the efficiency savings, you know, if if you know just converting to a new high school RTCC complex versus having everybody together on one campus. So I again I think it's probably coming and it's important. I also think that, you know, the students that live on East Hill and Brookfield, it's really far. And if their parents are going to bury every day, there is just not time for them to come all the way to Randolph. So if there's buses and efforts put into that, I think that would be yeah. well received. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm in agreement. But it, like I said, it is it is a discussion, and it'll it'll make more sense. We'll have actual kind of numbers to be able to talk with people about once that study is done, which is why it's so important. Um, but you know, we do have we also have our um, after school busing now um, that the, the town was, which is great. Yeah, and so really, that would be a, really an ideal nice. thing for. Yeah, mm -hmm. they can participate in the activities and the sports and the extracurriculars and still get them home. Yeah. yeah. And I know this is not on, on the agenda, so I don't want to dive too deeply into this, but I do want to say that saying that it's going to be better very broadly, very confidently, without more information is feels like I want more information when you say, oh, it's it's going to be better for these students. How? Uh, right. I exactly. want more information, what? but now is not the time to what talk about it. Other opportunities? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it feels unfair that you make that statement and we can't get more information about it right now. <laughs> the students and parents in Brookfield are going to that as well. Yeah, and should. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, that's, that's why we want to prepare. Yeah. So this idea was brought forward years ago and it was met with a tremendous amount of resistance when the OSSC merged all three boards and I, from the Brookfield residents and I think it's important to be 
mindful of and sensitive about those kinds of things going forward because it just is. Yeah. Well, we get it. We the the reason why the question has to be asked. Um, is because, you know, this is a once in a hundred year opportunity right. to make darn sure we do it right and so that we get a hundred good years of service yes. out of it. Yeah. So very, very good points. I appreciate it. We're going a little off the rails yes, here. So Sorry. coming back to the yeah. consent agenda, um, are there further questions about that facilities reserve funds request? Great. How about the list of professional contracts issued since the last board meeting? Questions? The contracts after tonight are back in your hands. Got it. Based on, yeah. Okay. Um, so then, with including a couple of edits to some minutes, I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as a whole. So moved. Thank you, Katya. Second. Thank you, Chelsea. Uh, further discussion? Oop. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, superintendent's report. Got it. Anyone have any questions? Okay. The um, principals and director reports. <laughs> Newsletter links. Anybody got those? Action items. I mean, really, it's about action next action. meeting. <laughs> it was action packed. Um, yeah, there's. We have a lot to. We've already had our agenda meeting. Basically, it's been right here. Uh, -do. I mean, that's pretty much my action recap. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a big meeting next time, and get your subcommittees together. Um, um, considering that next meeting is so busy, mm -hmm. if I was going to uh, maybe get do a uh, subcommittee update on facilities, on the idea around building new campus, because mm -hmm. we have me on that <laughs> alone. Um, so I was going to meet with... That's why I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. Um, it's a very efficient subcommittee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all the time. Our meetings go quick. <laughs> the minutes are wrong. <laughs> um, but maybe not next not next meeting, but the following meeting, I can give a report on that. Okay. Really, the following November. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, well, I don't know. This one's it's it's okay. mentioned in the superintendent's report. And it's like yeah. okay. So November things aren't moving yeah. like there's All right. no decision to make. It's not. It's not it's no, we're, wait. we're data collecting it. Yeah. Great. Okay. I'm really sorry. I should have had you on the subcommittee list. Oh, so. it's okay. Okay. Sorry. Uh, report. Okay. Financials? Mm -hmm. Any comments? Um, Questions? Yeah, actually, they're, they're good. I think they, there was a handout that came out. Um, if you go to, just for fun, so you know where some of this stuff is, uh, Orange Southwest School District Revenue. And then top line says local revenues, and then it says tuition, and you see that 507, 827. That is the amount of money that we are taking in from students who are tuitioning to come here, uh, which is which is a, a good chunk. Uh, so we've got, we've got a lot of students who are coming here above and beyond. Um, in terms of the well, overall, that, so I have the wrong handout. Hold on, yeah, hold where, on. Where are you? It's this separate piece of paper, but I didn't get just one. Just well, I would, but I can. I only got one, one piece. Yeah. You should have three. There should be three sheets with that. Oh, oh. No. There, there should be, a, there's a, there's usually a summary, there's a... All um, I got from Robin was... Oh, you know what? The there, there, are, there are other, there are other, other tabs, so it's okay, oh, we'll, we'll figure it out. I missed that. But I, I, I'll, I'll share it out with the board. Great. Uh, but in terms of the finances, we should be spending about 8.3% of the, um, the budget every month. Um, so we're in, this is at the end of month two. So we should have spent, you know, 16.6%. We've only spent 9.4%. Um, so we're well in the black. Uh, there was nothing that jumped out. I had a good conversation with Robin today. Nothing that jumped out is unusual or, um, you know, overspent or things like that. Facilities is, is a little ahead of where they should be, but there's been a lot that they were doing to get that water pipe replaced. Yeah. So if maybe you can just send that out to us. And yeah, then if I'll people get that have out questions, um, I'll show you that next meeting. 
we shouldn't have to pay for the excavator to move twice because it was already here. It was right? already here doing, <laughs> doing Mr. Garrow's property. All right. Um, we've made it through to adjournment, uh, but it looks like we have an executive session on there. So I will entertain a motion to move into executive session. Um, What's it for? Yeah. Personnel. I, uh, but, I would. Uh, there was a discussion from, I think, board on Evergreen needs to be discussed and to potentially add it to put it into this executive session because that uh, legal action. Legal action. Yeah. Legal action. So I would ask that the board add, add that to as whether it needs to go away. But did we have personnel? We do have to personnel. discuss. Okay. Yes. And we're bringing in Lane and Heather. Okay, so who, who moves that? Are we waiting for movement? All right. Yeah. I move to adjourn this meeting and move into executive session. We're not adjourning. Just moving into executive oh. session. I said adjourn and I shouldn't have. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I move to executive session for personal and legal issues, and I am inviting Lane Millington and Heather. Waller. Thank you. Waller. Do we have a second? A second. Great, thank you, Chelsea. We are moving into executive session at 8.36 p.m.